an organization is implementing a change management process to ensure that modifications to systems are thoroughly tested before deployment. What is the primary technical implication of this security measure? Is it A, reduced do system downtime? Is it B, increased system availability? Is it C, enhanced system reliability? Or is it D, minimized security vulnerabilities? You have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, minimized security vulnerabilities. Thorough testing before deployment within a change management process is a critical technical control aimed at identifying and addressing potential security vulnerabilities. By conducting extensive testing, organization minimizes the risk of exploitation and unauthorized access, contributing to a robust security posture. Implementing security-focused automated testing tools and conducting manual penetration testing during the testing phase helps identify intricate vulnerabilities that may not be evident with standard testing methods. This comprehensive approach ensures that the system is resilient against various exploitation attempts. And now for the incorrect answers, while uh, reduced system downtime, whilst thoroughly testing may contribute to system stability, the primary focus is on identifying and minimizing security vulnerabilities rather than directly reducing system downtime. Increased system availability. Although testing contributes to system reliability, the primary technical implication is the identification and mitigation of security vulnerabilities, not necessarily an increase in system availability and enhanced system reliability. Whilst testing enhances system reliability, the primary goal is to minimize security vulnerabilities and ensure a secure deployment. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, an organization is conducting security awareness training for employees to educate them about phishing threats. Which is the primary compensating control associated with this security measure? Is it a two-factor authentication or 2FA? Is it B, Intrusion Prevention System, or IPS? Is it C, Incident Response Plan? Or is it D, Email Filtering? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, Email Filtering. While security awareness training is a preventive control aimed at educating employees, email filtering serves as a compensating control by detecting and blocking malicious emails, especially phishing attempts. This additional layer of defense compensates for potential human vulnerabilities, reducing the risk of successful phishing attacks. Deploying advanced email filtering solutions with machine learning capabilities helps analyze email content, links, and attachments. By automatically filtering out or quarantining potentially malicious emails, the organization compensates for the variability in human awareness, bolstering its defenses against phishing threats. And now for the incorrect answers, two-factor authentication or 2FA. Whilst 2FA is a valuable preventive control, it's not directly associated with compensating for potential vulnerabilities introduced by employee actions. Introduction Prevention Systems or IPS. IPS is a technical control focused on preventing and detecting network-based threats, not specifically compensating for user vulnerabilities targeting, targeted in phishing attacks. And the incident response plan. An incident response plan is a recovery control. It's not directly related to compensating controls associated with phishing threats. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, an organization is implementing biometric access controls for secure entry into its data center. What is the primary physical control associated with this security measure? Is it A, surveillance cameras? Is it B, man traps? Is it C, encryption, or is it D, intrusion detection system, or IDS? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, man traps. While biometric access controls serve as a technical control for authenticating individuals, man traps provide a physical control by ensuring that only one person enters the data center at a time. Man traps enhance the security of physical entry points, preventing unauthorized access, even if someone attempts to tailgate behind an authorized person. Deploying man traps involves an interlocking door system that allows only one person to enter at a time. This physical control complements biometric access, creating a secure and controlled environment by preventing unauthorized access attempts. And now for the incorrect answers, surveillance cameras. While surveillance cameras are important for monitoring, they are not the primary physical control associated with restricting entry into, in the context of biometric access. 
Encryption is a technical control used for protecting data, not a physical control associated with restricting entry into a secure area. An intrusion detection system is a technical control focused on detecting network-based threats, not physical access control. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, an organization is conducting regular security audits and assessments to identify and address vulnerabilities. What is the primary directive control associated with this security measure? Is it A, access control policy? Is it B, security awareness training? Is it C, incident response plan? Or is it D, acceptable use policy? Or A, U, P. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, acceptable use policy, or AUP. An AUP serves as a directive control by establishing rules and expectations for user behavior, including cooperation with security audits and assessments. It sets the framework for acceptable actions and behaviors related to the organization's information systems. The AUP may explicitly state that the employees are required to participate in and cooperate with security audits and assessments as part of their responsibilities. This directive control ensures a standardized approach to security practices. And now for the incorrect answers, security awareness training. While security awareness training is crucial, it's a preventative control and not directly associated with the directive control of participation in security audits. Incident response plan. An incident response plan is a recovery control and it's not directly related to the directive controls associated with regular security audits. And the BCP or business continuity plan focuses on business continuity and is not directly associated with directive controls related to security audits. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, an organization is implementing a virtual private network or VPN for secure remote access. What is the primary preventive control associated with this security measure? Is it A, intrusion detection system or IDS? Is it B, firewall? Is it C, antivirus software? Or is it D, two-factor authentication or 2FA? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, firewall. Whilst the VPN is a technical control providing secure remote access, the use of a firewall as a preventive measure helps control and secure network traffic. The firewall acts as a barrier between the internal network and external connections, preventing unauthorized access and protecting against potential threats. Configuring the firewall to allow VPN traffic whilst blocking unauthorized access helps maintain the integrity and security of the network. This preventive control ensures that only authenticated and authorized users can establish VPN connections. And now for the incorrect answers, intrusion detection systems or IDS is a detective control focused on identifying and responding to security incidents, not a preventive control associated with VPN implementation. Antivirus software is a preventive control, but is not directly associated with the implementation of a VPN for secure remote access. And two-factor authentication, whilst 2FA is a valuable preventive control, it's not the primary control associated with the secure remote access provided by a VPN. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, an organization is implementing a data loss prevention or DLP solution to monitor and control the movement of sensitive data. What is the primary detective control associated with this security measure? Is it A, encryption? Is it B, security information and event management or a SIEM system? Is it C, access control policy? Or is it D, incident response plan? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, Security Information and Event Management, or SIEM system. A SIEM system acts as a detective control by aggregating, correlating, and analyzing events, including those related to potential data loss incidents identified by the DLP solution. The SIEM system allows security teams to detect and respond to anomalies and patterns indicative of unauthorized data movement. This detective control enhances the organization's ability to identify and mitigate data loss incidents. And now for the incorrect answers, encryption is a preventive control used to protect sensitive data but is not, a direct, is not directly associated with detecting incidents of data loss. Access control policy. The access control policy is a directive control managing user access but is not directly associated with the detective controls related to monitoring and preventing data loss. An incident response plan. An incident response plan is a recovery control that is not directly related to detective controls associated with DLP monitoring. 
end for the next question of our exam, question number 7. And the question states, an organization is implementing a new software application and it's conducting regular vulnerability scanning during the development process. What is the primary compensating control associated with this security measure? Is it A, secure coding practices? Is it B, security awareness training? Is it C, incident response plan? Or is it D, intrusion prevention system or IPS? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is A, secure coding practices. Whilst vulnerability scanning is a preventive control, secure coding practices serve as a compensating control by minimizing the introduction of vulnerabilities during the development phase. This proactive approach helps address potential security weaknesses before they can be exploited. Incorporating secure coding practices involves using secure programming techniques, adhering to coding standards, and implementing best practices to reduce the likelihood of introducing vulnerabilities. This compensating control complements vulnerability scanning for a more robust application security strategy. And now for the incorrect answers, security awareness training is important, but is not directly associated with compensating for vulnerabilities introduced during the development process. An incident response plan is a recovery control and is not directly related to compensating controls associated with development. And IPS, or Intrusion Prevention System, is a technical control focused on preventing and detecting network-based threats, not compensating for vulnerabilities in software development. And for the next question of our exam, question number 8. And the question states, an organization is implementing a comprehensive disaster recovery plan, or DRP, to ensure business continuity. What is the primary recovery control associated with this security measure? Is it A, redundant systems and failover? Is it B, data backup procedures? Is it C, security awareness training? Or is it D, encryption for data in transit? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is A, redundant systems and failover. While the DRP includes various recovery controls, implementing redundant systems and failover mechanisms is essential for ensuring continuous operations. Redundancy and failover mechanisms compensate for potential disruptions and contribute to a resilient infrastructure. Redundant systems and failover ensure that if one of the systems or components fail, another takes over seamlessly minimizing downtime and ensuring business continuity. This recovery control is critical for maintaining operational stability in the face of unexpected events. And now for the incorrect answers, data backup procedures. Data backup is an important recovery control, but is not directly associated with the redundant systems and failover mechanisms that ensure continuous business operations. Security awareness training is a preventive control, not a recovery control associated with business continuity. And encryption for data in transit is a preventive control and is not directly associated with recovery tools for business continuity. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, an organization is implementing a new access control system to enforce the principle of least privilege. What is the primary administrative control associated with this security measure? Is it A, acceptable use policy or AUP? Is it B, security awareness training? Is it C, incident response plan? Or is it D, business continuity plan or BCP? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, Acceptable Use Policy, or AUP. An AUP establishes rules and expectations for user behavior, including adherence to the principle of least privilege. By defining acceptable actions and access levels, the AUP serves as an administrative control that guides users in their interaction with information systems. The AUP may explicitly state the principle of least privilege, outlining the need for users to have only the minimum level of access necessary for their job responsibilities. This administrative control ensures a standardized approach to access management. And now for the incorrect answer, security awareness training was important. Security awareness training is a preventative control, preventive control and is not directly associated with the princ principle of least privilege. Incident response plan. An incident response plan is a recovery control and is not directly related to administrative controls associated with access control. And business continuity plan or BCP. A BCP focuses on business continuity and is not directly associated with administrative controls related to access control. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now back to our exam. 
an organization is implementing a security information and event management or SIEM system to centralize log collection and analysis. What is the primary technical control associated with this security measure? Is it A, physical access controls? Is it B, intrusion detection system or IDS? Is it C, virtual private network or VPN? Or is it D, encryption for data at rest? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, Intrusion Detection System, or IDS. Whilst the SIEM system is a combination of technical and administrative controls, the primary technical aspect is its integration with IDS for detecting security incidents. The IDS component within the SIEM system plays a crucial role in real-time event detection and analysis. The SIEM system aggregates log data from various sources and the integrated IDS component monitors the data for patterns indicative of potential security incidents. This technical control enhances the organization's ability to detect and respond to threats. And now for the incorrect answers, physical access controls are administrative and physical controls, but they are not directly associated with log collection and analysis within a SIEM system. VPN or virtual private network is a technical control, but is not directly associated with log collection and analysis in the context of SIEM system. And encryption for data at rest is a preventative control, preventive control, and is not directly associated with log collection and analysis in SIEM system context. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video useful, make sure to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time.